61 people have been indicted on RICO charges for their alleged roles in the movement to stop Cop City. Many of the defendants had already been arrested for crimes that seem little more than normal acts of free speech. Those indicted include a legal observer who was jailed while monitoring protests, a bail fund organizer, multiple bail fund organizers, and three activists who were arrested while handing out flyers. That's what we'll be discussing today on The Left Wing. I am Dr. Erica Okamoto of the Cocktails and Capitalism podcast, and I'm joined by my co-host Desmond Price of Independent Thought. Uh, we're also joined by Jordan Barney and Heather Schmidt of the 805 Uncensored podcast. Stoked to have you guys here. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us. So yeah, I just, um, this story is so fucking crazy, man. Uh, I guess, first off, I just wanted to lay out that there have been a lot of things that have happened just recently. Um the city has been trying its darndest to fucking repress the referendum effort to get cop city on the ballot. Um, they, you know, they've done, they've, they've done so many different things to try to throw uh, a wrench in the gears of that effort to legally say no to cop city, um, including demanding things like signature matching, which is a standard Republican uh, repression technique during elections. Um, and this is by a democratic, de democratically run city. I mean, these these people, this administration is largely democratic. So, um, so this is really, really insane that they are kind of trying to criminalize protest, criminalize free speech, um, and the actual language of the indictment uh, specifically talks about mutual aid, solidarity, and collectivism, um, as well as anarchism kind of tying all these things up with the organized criminal enterprise that they are trying to paint the defend the, the Atlanta forest movement to be, you know, so um, Rico charges, they involve, um, as I've, I've stated before, uh, Rico, the Rico act was invented to go after the mafia, to be able to tie crimes that were committed by low level people within a criminal organization to the mob bosses to actually be able to bring them down. Um, so it had a kind of a good purpose there, I guess, but of course it was going to be weaponized against the left. And that is absolutely what's happening here in this instance. Um, uh, what else does I got to say here? Um, the RICO charges dropped um, from Attorney General Chris Carr on September 5th. Um, and two days later, there was a direct action from five people from the movement, uh, including faith leaders who broke into the construction site and chains, chained themselves to a bulldozer. That was such a brave act when 61 people are facing RICO charges. They're doing this right after that. It's really an amazing statement right there. Um, so, and and it's important to highlight that RICO is kind of becoming a favorite tool of Georgia prosecutors. So, um, you know, we're seeing it being used against Trump. We're seeing it being used against these uh, these protesters. It's been used against rappers. <laughs> like, um, So, yeah, I don't know, I guess, I wanted to, um, before I turn it over to you guys, I wanted to just read a couple quotes from the indictment um, that were absolutely insane to me. Um, the very beginning of the indictment, they're talking about defend the Atlanta forest and trying to paint it as an organized criminal enterprise. Um, but they start talking about things like uh, anarchy, collectivism, mutual aid, and social solidarity, trying to criminalize these, these terms and that they're related to anarchism. So here's what they say. Um, and this is about anarchy. Instead of relying on a modicum of government structure, anarchy relies on human association instead of government to fulfill all human needs. Really poorly worded sentence <laughs> there. Um, some of the major ideas that anarchists promote include collectivism, mutual aid, mutualism and social solidarity and these same ideas are frequently seen in the defend the atlanta forest movement and then about mutual aid it says mutual aid is a term popularized by anarchists to describe individuals who exchange goods and services to assist other individuals in society without government intervention closely related to collectivism mutual aid is not a new term nor is it limited to anarchy however the major factor is in anarchist mutual aid is the absence of government and the absence of hierarchy. 
indeed an anarchist belief relies uh, relies on the notion that once government is abolished, individuals rel will rely on mutual aid to exist. In doing so, anarchists believe that the individuals individuals will work together and voluntarily contribute their own resources to ensure that each individual has its own needs met. Um, so that's <laughs> yeah, some of the language around um, yeah, anarchism and mutual aid in the indictment. I just want to get your your folks' reaction to that. I mean, just so horrible, right? Like the way that they're describing that. Wow, like standing in solidarity with one another, getting into the forest to defend it against, you know, a multi-million dollar police and firefighting compound being built in an indigenous forest. Mm -hmm. um, such a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like the comparison that you made in your previous episode on this topic, Erica, when you were talking about um, the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. because I think really this is a paranoid reaction in the state of Georgia. Um, they're afraid of the obsolescence of the state. So basically a government being so bad at providing services for people that it's effectively considered obsolete um, psychologically in the minds of people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is a continuous effort by governments, frankly, around the entire world, not just the United States, that are taking aggressive stances against any sort of um, environmental protesters. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in Amsterdam, I saw recently that cops released uh, water cannons on protesters, and that reminds me of, you know, the civil rights era in the United States. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the fact that this is spreading internationally i think is making governments increasingly concerned um, about environmental protests and that's why we're seeing uh, more draconian measures enacted towards them absolutely what do you think heather yeah no i uh i agree with you on that i just i i I find that the description of mutual aid in particular <laughs> is so is so it's so funny because um first of all a, you know the government relies on its own kind of mutual aid network with nonprofits and the private sector to deliver what it can't deliver right mm. so to so yep. to yeah so to be uh, painting that in a bad light, um, that, you know, if people don't have their needs met, that they're relying on their community members using almost a similar model to what the government uses, it's a little <laughs> hypocritical. Like, yeah. as if that's a bad thing, that's a little hypocritical. Yeah. Um, I, I, I am not an anarchist, um, but uh, some of these ideas are just not really egregious to me you know <laughs> I, I don't know how I, they could be <laughs> it's 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 sometimes hard to like find words to to describe how kind of weird and absurd it's like we've reached the point of absurdism where we're talking yeah. about these things as if they're bad when when you get to the the issue with cop city though I mean um you know I am only recently learning about like all of what's going into it and i i i really would like to know more uh from you guys actually about like the 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 concerns with it are the land it's being built on and the military militarization correct yeah the militarization of the police um the impact that it has on the climate mm -hmm. uh what else am i missing erica I mean, yeah, the the you know intensification of urban warfare um, mm -hmm. techniques within police, both in the U.S. and abroad, because and they're going to be having like Israeli defense forces, IDF people coming here to also train with our police, um, and they are really fucking bad when it comes to repression and brutality. Um, and you know that uh, what else uh, yeah like the the clear cutting of this forest which is one of the remaining lungs of atlanta you know um which will have disproportionate effects uh, you know bad environmental effects on largely black and brown communities that surround this facility um 
so those are some of the the main ones. I mean, there's so much more tied into why policing is toxic and bad in this yeah. country. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think those are the core ones that Jordan mentioned. I think also just well, the, pre- the precedence too, right? The fact mm-hmm, that the police yeah. could just do this in yeah. a protected forest, that could, I mean, this could happen anywhere. And I think that's why it's become so popular is because people are making that connection that this could be in my community. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, and in many ways, I mean, it, it is, I mean, it's growing already. I mean, if you look around, anytime you go out, out of your house, now you, you see five, six cops just patrolling everywhere. Whereas I don't know, maybe a year ago it was maybe one. Uh, I, I'm cops sure everywhere of, now. Yeah. I mean, every single night, I, I don't know if it's because I live in Oxnard now, um, but uh, there's a copper chopper over our house every wow. single night. And, you know, I mean, I think this gets back to what Desmond was talking about on the other episode about um, how much stuff we're criminalizing, you know, and and what we're, like everybody's becoming an enemy. Uh, you know, what did you say that one of the issues was handing out flyers? Like, yeah. whoa, oh, no, <laughs> not so, flyers. So anarch- <laughs> Classic like, free speech right there. <laughs> Come on. And, and anarchism, like just from a pure, like philosophical standpoint can just come down to like, anytime you solve a problem without involving law enforcement, you're being an anarchist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're yeah. finding an anarchist solution. Yeah. Desmond, yeah. did you have... Did you want to jump in here about anything? Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I think that one of the things that kind of got lost in the conversation here is just what exactly is Cop City? And yeah, I, okay. I want to come, I want to yeah. come back to that for a second because you know we're talking about the RICO charges and we should be highlighting, you know, more or less what is happening with these people. But what is Cop City, Erica? You've been doing a lot of coverage on this. Can you just tell yeah. people what exactly this massive compound is supposed to be? Yeah, I'm just really briefly, it's a massive hyper-militarized police urban warfare training facility um, that's going to cost, I think, around $90 million. At first, they said it was much less, but then that amount went way up. Um, It is was going to include like a helicopter landing pad and um, bomb detonation area. This is like in a <laughs> residential neighborhood, you know, they already have like shooting ranges and stuff. So people already have like PTSD just from living around this facility. But <laughs> I don't, I don't think that the, the um, bomb detonation center is going to be included anymore. Uh, but they, it includes things even like, a club for the police officers to go and party in there um, and like what? fake fake like neighborhoods so that they can practice urban warfare so they can go and fucking break down doors and storm into houses and just practice terrorizing people basically um it is it has been opposed by you know the Fuck. large uh, majority black and brown communities around uh the facility as well as the indigenous people, the Muscogee people, um, and and other indigenous folks who have come to show solidarity and to try to protect this forest. Um, and yeah, it is, it's just such a, um, it would increase police militarization in this country so much and, and increase the training, like I mentioned before, of police from elsewhere. Um, and it is just something that when we are trying to have a discussion about defunding the police in the wake of uh, the the George Floyd murder, um, this is exactly what we do not need, you know. And and I I failed to bring up this is a really important point here in the indictment. They list the day of George Floyd's death as the day that this criminal organized criminal enterprise this criminal conspiracy of defend the atlanta forest which is literally just a twitter account that you that posts things about what's happening um you know it is yeah the it i lost where i was going there but it's fucking insane <laughs> well you gotta be careful erica they might hit you with a rico charge next for yeah, you know, talking right. to these people online you i know, mean I, i've been reading closely through the part that's about like agitation and information sharing and stuff. I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> go on. Well, even, even yeah. after, even after January 6th, 
like the Joe Biden administration, I remember I posted about it in 2021, labeled like anarchism as like an unacceptable ideology that was like mm. comparable to being a terrorist. Jeez. And I, I remember like that gave me goosebumps. Like, yeah, jeez. Th- how is that? How is that any different than the first two red scares that we've had in this country? Yeah, yeah. And we've had anarchist scares too. Yeah, that's what I mean Just, by the red scares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all sure. lumped in together. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we we talked about this, you know, earlier in the year, Erica, where it seems though these people are mostly just going into the forest, just trying to occupy the land to prevent the construction of the site from being built. People are building mm-hmm. tree houses. We saw actually mainstream outlets like the Daily Show go down there and do a little little coverage piece of it. People just chilling in the forest, just hanging out. Some people are sitting in tree houses, and yet the police are charging some of these people with domestic terrorist charges the Mm -hmm. same charges that are being leveled against people who stormed the capitol for Mm -hmm. the egregious crime of sitting in a forest (laughs) in a tree house and Mm -hmm. they're being charged with what was it like 30 years some of these people were being charged with like you know sentences of up to that much for the domestic terrorism charge that gets leveled to some of these people it's five to 25 or something like that yeah yeah it's it's unbelievable to hear things like that but let me reference one of the people who had uh who came into our chat recently because I oh, think geez. that <laughs> I think that they might be indicative of quite a few individuals here in America. Yeah. I think the comment went somewhere along the lines of aren't we always asking the police to be better trained? And here the police are building themselves a training facility. <laughs> What's so wrong with that? Oh fuck me. <laughs> but you know, honestly, let I, I think. Honestly, entertain that question, though. Why is this a bad thing? Because to someone who might not be paying attention, maybe they do think that this is a good thing. So honest question, why is it a bad thing? Who wants to take that one first? (laughs) If you want to do it, go for it. I uh, have got lots of thoughts, but... (laughs) Um, I I guess, like, this is probably going to be, like, an oversimplification, but, like... So, like, if you have a wildfire, for example, right, you're not going to, you're going to think about, like, oh, what 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 caused this wildfire? Like, high winds, um, fuel loads, et cetera. Um, you're not going to be like, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should grab some gasoline. Or maybe I should do something that would make this fire bigger. So, for me, um, building the police compound is making our police militarization problem infinitely worse. Yeah. So this is not this is not just more training. This is what you were talking about, Erica. This is urban warfare. This is training um, terrorism. This is training the state to commit terrorism against its own citizens. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might not be like a super strong argument against like a naysayer, but like I don't know. I just I think of things like in in practical terms like that. Um, but hopefully that would at least like resonate with them somewhat. I have a great argument for you. <laughs> <laughs> Study after study after study has unequivocally shown that militarizing the police is not effective. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's not yeah. effective in it's reducing stopping crime. It's yeah. stopping crime and it and it actually harms um mm-hmm. many communities, black yeah. and brown communities. Um so yeah, that's, I guess, to yeah. me, that's really all you really need to know is that it doesn't work. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, are you willing, like, I guess, like, really what it comes <laughs> down to, like, are you willing to accept the data and the evidence? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, there are things that you can do to potentially make policing a little bit safer, but pouring a whole bunch pouring millions of dollars and a whole bunch of fancy equipment and you know um helicopter landing pad and all this other fucking shit like giving them all of these tools that is not training about how to um de-escalate situations that is not training about 
how to <laughs> yeah really solve any of the problems that we want police to solve um that is that is just teaching them how to barge you know break down doors and arrest people and deal with mass unrest which is i mean uh, Micah Herskind, who came on my show, who is uh, one of the organizers from the movement, um, you know, very decentralized movement. He he said that. Um, oh, fuck. I just totally fucking lost what I was going to say. What was I saying? God damn it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, shit. Fuck. Oh. Can we cut that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. I'll just I'll pick it. I'll pick it up for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Jesse. Now, truthfully for me, this is when people who talk about the police needing training, you know, let me just let me just address that just point blank. Uh, that is not saying that they need to be trained how to be more aggressive, more right. militarized, more SWAT like more. Yeah. Let's go yeah. like burst into some poor person's home and terrorize this whole family and rip people out of their home. Like, that's not the training that people are asking for. The training they're asking for is learn how to have an interaction with someone where you don't yeah. kill them. Like, <laughs> totally. That's, that's the training they're looking for. Jesus and Christ. this facility right. isn't providing that training. This facility yeah. is providing the other training. So you're bringing in what you said, uh, um, police forces from Israel. They're not exactly known for their peaceful tactics. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like, I think about like the cop that killed Jacob Blake, for example, though, like what he was shot like 19 times in the back. Like how much more training do you need in mm. order to be told that you're not supposed to shoot somebody in the back 19 times? That's zero threat to you. Like, I just I, I don't even know. That, right. that, that so comes down me, to let morality. Let me address that actually one that's particularly important. There are certain groups that go around to different police departments around this country right now. We had one of them recently here in Missoula, Montana, mm -hmm. uh, to where local governments will hire these organizations to come in and train their police. And one of the overall, I guess, like messages that they try to like, I guess, um, say to the police departments is that essentially um, you're constantly in danger. You know, like uh, you have to protect yeah. yourselves at all costs and make sure that you shoot first. And it, it basically just like telling these people that they yeah. need to be thinking about taking lethal force like quickly without thinking about it, you know, just shoot first, ask questions later, more or less mentality. That's the training they're receiving right now. So when we're talking about the problems with policing, it's not about doubling down on the terrible things that they're already doing. Yeah, it's about yeah. retracting what they're doing. Yeah. And that is not going to be accomplished with this facility being built in Cop City, which is obviously why you're seeing such a groundswell of resistance in that community. People who are willing to go to that to those city council meetings and testify for hours over hours, who are willing to sit in that forest and take those domestic terrorism charges to make sure this facility isn't built. Why so many people are organizing these funds, trying to protect these people, trying to make sure that there is some kind of infrastructure in place to keep everyone together as they are protesting this, because everyone in that community knows that this is not the answer. It really isn't. And I hope mm -hmm. that more people will talk about this because if not, you know, we know how these stories typically end. If there isn't a groundswell of like, I guess, of dissent, not just in the community, but also outside of the community nationally, then that facility might get built. So we need to keep talking about it. We really do. Erica, thank you for bringing this up today and for, you know, interviewing people on your show because we need more people to be talking about Cop City. Absolutely. It's so important. And uh, yeah, I love that we keep covering it on this show as well. I, I think it's really, really important that we keep having this conversation again and again. Right. <laughs>